College Success Arizona presents Scholar Interviews. The following interview features Dina DeLeon. I was born in Guadalupe, Arizona, which is a small town just south of Tempe, and I was raised there as well. And where did you attend school? Were you a good student, a hardworking student? Yeah, I actually attended school in Tempe for elementary, middle school, and high school, and I was very persistent as a student in just trying to join as many clubs as I can, be very involved, and uh, my parents taught me that that was probably where most of my just successes and memories would come from, and that was true. What are your memories of growing up uh, as a family? Do you have a lot of positive memories? Yes, I actually have, um, I come from a pretty big family. I have five siblings, three brothers and two sisters. I'm the fifth out of six, so I do have a younger sister. And we uh, we grew up very close, and I had uh, my brothers to look up to. They're great role models. We would get along very well. And where are you now in terms of attending college, and what is your course of study? All right, well, I go to uh, ASU, Arizona State University in Tempe, Arizona. I currently study economics as well as Italian. Uh, I have a passion for mathematics, but also being able to kind of work cross sectionally through um, math, graphs, working visually, as well as speaking and writing. So that's why I really have an interest in economics. But I'm also um, passionate about learning Italian and learning more about the culture and the language. I studied abroad there last summer, and I'm looking forward to studying abroad again in Italy this upcoming summer. Do you speak Spanish? Uh, No, I don't speak Spanish, but both of my parents do. It's a language that I do want to improve upon, but right now, as of now, I'm not proficient in Spanish. The only reason I ask, I was wondering if there was any similarities in those two languages. Oh, they're very similar. (laughs) I had some friends who were from Mexico who studied abroad with me, and they were able to pick up the language more fast. So I think that's probably where I want to study next. But as of now, I think the resources are here at ASU. The Italian program is great. So I've been focused on soaking in all I could while I'm here. (laughs) And where are you? Are you a junior or senior? I'm a junior. And how old are you? I am currently 21. Just turned 21 uh, about a week and a half ago. And what is it about the Italian culture language that interests you? I really love how Italian life could seem a little bit more simple than here in America, where we kind of... See, everything is very fast-paced. I know there might be a stereotype that Italians could be a bit impatient, but they take time to, just in the way that they eat, in the way that they dress, it's very, it might be somewhat like at an artistic or performance level. They're able to just very much not take for granted the small day-to-day things that we might kind of rush through, such as when we're eating we tend to maybe not appreciate the food or a big concept there too is like slow food, not fast food, such as being able to go through a drive through and pick up anything you want. Italians will make their food, grow their grapes, clean up after they eat. It's very, I think it's a, it's a beautiful language and culture as well. And I'm looking forward to going back there and getting to experience it all again. It seems that maybe they enjoy life or relax a little bit more than Americans. Americans spend their time (laughs) accumulating wealth, but they maybe don't always enjoy the journey or the process, huh? Yes, as well as the, um, I think the education system is also, it's very different there as well. Yes, they pick a discipline or a course of study while they're very young, maybe in high school, and they continue on with that through college and graduation. But I feel like here it's also very rushed. You graduate high school, and then you have to pick something, and there's not much flexibility, or you have exams every week or once a week, whereas they don't have exams until maybe the end of the semester or the end of their graduation years of college. So I think just the way that they do things is a little bit differently. And it's something that I feel like we should be exposed to, at least, and not be able to go through life not knowing that there are other ways that people live as well. And they also have Ferraris. Yeah, they're big on design. That's where the artistic and traditional, um, it's kind of like uh, I studied, uh, what was I studying in my, my Italian pop culture class? And my professor said, it's probably impossible to not be inspired by all of the beauty and the art and years of hundreds and thousands of years of art that you're walking on 
while you're in Italy. <laughs> so you're pursuing a bachelor's degree in economics. Did I hear that right? Yes, a bachelor's of science in economics. And what do you hope to do as a career with that degree? I'm actually looking into um, a bit of like corporate opportunities in Italy, such as uh, UTC, United Technologies Aerospace. They have a base or area in Italy, and so I'd like to maybe visit this summer and see if I could get any, uh, what's the criteria or base of applying after graduation, because I know I would need like a work visa, a work permit and such, but probably maybe start out in like analytics, see where I go from there. But as long as I'm able to, since there is a statistic that not many, like maybe less than 60% of students, well, about 60% of students won't end up working in the field that they're, or major that they're graduating in. So I kind of took that to heart and figured that if I study economics, it's not an easy discipline. It's very difficult. So if I could master this now, I could do anything after I graduate. Maybe not so much engineering, but <laughs> it might take me a little bit more time. But I'd be able to adapt and see what I like after I graduate. So it sounds to me like you envision a future living and working in Italy for at least part of your 20s? Yes, that is my goal. I'm also very interested in startups and startup culture, and I've attended a Phoenix startup uh, mixers and startup weekends, and I would like to um, experience that in Italy, which is another thing that I will be pursuing this summer. In July, I will be attending a European Innovation Academy, which is I get to form a team out in Torino, Italy, with people from across, like, different parts of the world. Not everybody there will be Italian. There will be people from, I don't know, Russia, Norwegian, anywhere around the world that I'll be able to form a team with and possibly take a startup off the ground while I'm there. So whether I'm in tech or any type of corporate field after, I'm pretty sure I will be able to apply my Italian culture studies, the language and math and economics, which is also a universal language, out in another part of the world. So I'm looking forward to that. Is your family Italian? Your last name De Leon? <laughs> no, we're not. We're we're Mexican. <laughs> and talk about College Success Arizona. When did you first learn about College Success Arizona? Uh, I learned about College Success Arizona through um, one of my. Well, actually, uh, I was in the uh, Arizona Quest for Kids program, which is a mentorship program, which uh, promised uh, scholarships to us from the age of nine. If we stayed with the program, which required uh, attending mentorship sessions weekly and um, attending field trips and getting a minimum of 15 hours a semester in uh, volunteering and community service, that we would um, be promised that scholarship once we graduate. But after many years of sticking with the program, Quest for Kids kind of dwindled down in their funding and uh, their organization. So what happened was Quest for Kids was taken through uh, New Pathways for Youth, which was in Phoenix. So uh, New Pathways for Youth promised us that they would do everything in their power to keep that promise that Quest made for us, help us retain our mentors as well as scholarships. So instead of them providing scholarships for each of the nine students at the time, they promised that they'd give us resources. And College Success Arizona was one of those resources. They definitely provided us with uh, list of scholarships that we, that we could apply to, but College Success Arizona was the one that uh, they had a goal for each of us to apply to and to execute the interview process very carefully, and we were able to practice, 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 and everyone who applied through CSA got the scholarship. How helpful has the scholarship been in terms of limiting your student debt? It has been very helpful in limiting my student debt. If I didn't have College Success Arizona, I wouldn't be able to pursue my education by any means. And they've not only provided me with financial need, but resources such as mentorship again. I was able to carry on with mentorship from third grade to 12th grade and through 12th grade through now. So I've been able to have mentors such as Myrna Cardenas and uh, Marjorie who are always there for me when I need them, lend a helping, helping hand. Uh, Rich Nickel will present, has provided opportunities for us scholars to attend networking luncheons and anything, any opportunity that presents itself to them, they will surely pass it on to their students without a doubt. 
You mentioned uh, Mirna Cardenas and Rich Nickel. Rich Nickel is the CEO of College Success Arizona, and Mirna Cardenas is uh, what your success advisor. Is that correct? Yes, yes. She's my uh, success ad- uh, advisor here for the Tempe campus at ASU. And how does she help you? What does she do specifically? Kind of if you have questions about classes or personal issues, does she sort of offer input or guidance? Yes, uh, all of the above. She is my kind of like she's a personal assistant to I think she has about 150 to 80 students, so she's able to keep track of all of us, and she is always, she remembers details about us, or she'll ask us, like, you know, I'm not only here for your academic support, but if you have any issues that may arise that you know you can't handle on your own, she's there for us, and she will, she's open to meet with us at any time we need, and if if a time that we want to meet doesn't necessarily work for her, she'll try to find a time that is probably the next day that'll work for both of us. So she's very helpful in accommodating our schedules and knowing that the life of students is very, I guess, day-to-day. A lot of things might be transient, so she's always there for us, and she's able to adapt quickly as how we have learned to do here in college. And, Dina, what advice do you have for students considering, school students, grade school students, considering college? A lot of advice, (laughs) but mainly to be very, I guess, Persistent in finding is it is what they would like to do at their time in college. I know when they enter, they might have a lot of high expectations for themselves, but it's okay to kind of wander a little bit, but still have a purpose. So if you, one thing doesn't work out, maybe go on to the next and see if that thing works, if they like it. Leave a little bit of room for failure, but at the same time, just don't give up it. Finding it is what you're actually truly passionate about that you'll wake up in the morning and you'll want to do because after college, I know that doesn't change. You need to be able to wake up in the morning and want to go to work. And and if you try hard enough, you'll find something that won't even feel like work. So that's my advice. Thank you, Dina, for the interview and for working so hard to make a difference in our community.